All right. In this video, I'm going to talk about sensitivity analysis in linear programming. Before diving into the subject, just take a look at my background. It's a nice picture, snowy day at the University of Alberta. I hope wherever you are, you stay safe and stay warm. So let's get started. I will post the link for this video where I showed you how to create a spreadsheet for least cost feed formulation, which runs based on linear programming models. So under the data tab, I just pressed solver and here I put dietary cost as objective cell and I wanted to minimize it. So my goal is to minimize the cost. So here in the solver results window, I can see solver found the solution, which means that my diet was feasible. So from reports section, you need to select sensitivity and just press OK. And here, you can see a new sheet popped up, which is sensitivity report, and you can see your report. I'm going to introduce these terms, then you can interpret your diet. So I have copied and pasted the sheet in PowerPoint, to show you how we can actually interpret this. Okay, the first thing you need to pay attention to is allowable increase and allowable decrease. For example, about corn, we can see allowable increase was 0 0.0028 and for the allowable decrease was 0.031. So what does it mean? Actually, it means that if corn price, it, mean, it, it means that objective coefficient, 0.234 dollar per kilogram was corn price. If corn price, increases by the amount shown in allowable increase or decreases by the amount shown in allowable decrease, then its inclusion rate in the diet, which was 57%, will remain the same. So what was the corn price? 0.234 dollar per kilogram. If it increases by this amount, it would come to 0 0.236 dollar per kilogram. And if the corn cost, you know, comes down by this amount, it would come to 0 0.202 dollar per kilogram. So the range for the corn price would be 0 0.202 all the way to 0 0.236 dollar per kilogram. It means that if the corn price fluctuates within this range, then its inclusion rate in my diet, which was 57%, will remain the same. Otherwise, if the corn price goes beyond this range, the inclusion rate will be different. So, the second term I'm going to introduce is reduced cost. So actually the reduced cost for a decision variable whose value is zero in the optimal solution is the amount the variable's objective function coefficient would have to be reduced by before this variable could assume a positive value. So, in practical language, you can see 
example from wheat here, right? What was the inclusion rate of wheat in my diet? Zero percent, which means that it was not used in my diet. Why? Maybe it was expensive. How much was it? 0 0.275 dollar per kilogram. So the sensitivity analysis shows me if the wheat price uh, comes down by this amount in reduced cost, then it will be used in my diet. So the current price for wheat is 0 0.275 dollar per kilogram, which is shown under the objective coefficient, right? If it comes down by 0 0.072 dollar per kilogram, it would come to 0 0.202 dollar per kilogram, right? So in that case, the wheat will be included in my diet and its inclusion rate will not be zero, will be something else. So the last term I'm going to show you is shadow price. Shadow price shows the amount of change in the objective cell, which was cost in our example, for each unit of changes in variable. For example, protein. Here you can see my dietary protein was 20%, right? Final value of protein was 20%. And we can see the shadow price is 0 0.0033 dollar per kilogram, which if I were to convert it to dollar per ton, it would be 3.3 dollar per ton. So here, this shadow price tells me if the protein level increases by 1%, you know, one unit, then the dietary cost would increase by this amount, 3.3 dollar per ton and vice versa. It means that if the protein levels goes down, you know, by 1%, then my dietary cost would be, would decrease by $3.3 per ton. But there is a range for this shadow price, right? And the range is allowable increase and allowable decrease. So it means that if protein level goes up all the way by the amount shown here, or comes down by the amount shown under allowable decrease, then this shadow price would same would would be same. And uh, but if the changes in dietary protein is beyond that range, then it would require me to resolve the program or let's say rerun the solver function. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this shadow price is true in a range of 18.5% to 20.91% of dietary protein. How did I calculate this range? Again, look, 20% is my current protein level in the diet. If it goes up by 0.91%, it would come to 20.91%. And if it goes down by 1.5%, shown here, it would come to 18.5%, right? It means that if I change my dietary protein within this range, then the shadow price is this. It means that for each unit of increase or decrease in dietary protein, my dietary cost would increase or decrease by this amount respectively.
So, but if I would, if I were to change the dietary protein beyond this range, then this shadow price is not true. And I need to rerun the solver function. Okay, this was the lesson I would like to give you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any question, let me know down there in the comments. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.